Connor in Virginia. You're live with Eric and Drew. Hello. Uh, how are you? Doing well. I, I, I know we don't have as much time to give uh, you know topics as we probably would hope, but we do want to jump through here. So it says in the uh, description for this call, anti-theism and, anti and how much respect we should show to believers and the healthy discourse between differing beliefs. Uh, what's up? Yeah, um, I grew up in a uh, Protestant church and I was raised in, uh, you know, the Bible Belt. And I also attended a, uh, a private evangelical institution. And so I have a lot of empathy for uh, theists and just how, uh, you know, how psychologically inclined people are to believe that kind of stuff. Because, mm -hmm. you know, I've walked way more than a mile in their shoes. And, you know, yeah. during that time, I, uh, I deconstructed myself probably halfway through my time in college. And I... Uh, so I just, I still find myself surrounded by those kind of people. And I just, I still feel myself kind of feeling empathetic towards those kind of people. And I just want to know, because oftentimes when I talk with atheists, uh, people who have never really had the faith, or maybe people who've had very traumatic experiences, mine was mostly intellectual, philosophical in nature. Um, mm -hmm. they're, they they often say like, oh man, it's like I'm talking to a theist, you know, I'll kind of be bashed because I don't have a... I have a lot more empathy toward the, towards a lot of people. I know we've talked about this a lot today, yeah. but I don't know what your thoughts are on, uh, you know, how, ex extending that grace uh, towards believers, allowing them to believe what they believe and kind of how you should brush up against people who, you know, agree with you, but don't agree with how you should go about handling discourse. Got it. Um, people say the same thing to me. I constantly get comments being like, oh, you're regressing to your former fundamentalist Christianity. And I'm like, mm. why is that? And they're like, because you're being tolerant. And I'm like, no, 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 no. That's, <laughs> that's not, that's not fundamentalist Christianity. <laughs> me, me having uh -huh. empathy and understanding religious people is informed by how I grew up just like you. But uh, mm. no, no, we, we know that religious fundamentalism is not known for its tolerant attitudes. Uh, but yeah, it we, for various reasons, because, like you said, people have not experienced uh, a religious community before or religious belief before. They don't have empathy for it. They they can't imagine. I think that they're the closest analog is probably believing in Santa Claus a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. And they're like, I can't imagine having a belief that is like my belief in Santa Claus that endures past the age of seven or something. Mm -hmm. And that's their closest analog to it. Honestly, I, I think the answer to that is probably them them just learning about the history and psychology and sociology of religion, not the philosophy of religion. That is not going to help. But people mm -hmm. learning about how religious history has occurred, how religious psychology works, I think it will increase mm -hmm. their empathy. So if you can educate yourself and be a conduit for that, that's very helpful. Mm -hmm. I would say that the people who probably struggle with maybe not empathy, but moderating themselves are actually people who have had experiences like our last caller. Our last caller had a lot of empathy and had a lot of patience and tolerance and he was very cool headed. And honestly, just even just seeing that, like I'm very encouraged and kind of amazed because it's, I know from experience, it's really, really hard to be as calm and as you know even-handed and honest and straightforward as our last caller was when you've experienced that and when you're still experiencing it and you know mm -hmm. for those people it it has to do like we said you know coming out of that becoming empathetic and becoming compassionate has a lot more to do mm -hmm. with taking care of your own mental health first and foremost and revisiting the subject mm -hmm. later uh a lot of the time lack of empathy comes from lack of education and so for me, I'm trying to spread empathy through what I do just by making educational videos about Christianity, you know? Yeah. And then uh, on the other side, uh, when it comes to talking to people who are just dicks about it, um, hmm. the general rule that I have is people deserve respect. Ideas do not. Hmm. Easy as that. If somebody's first if the first thing somebody says in a conversation is, you know, a pejorative against the human and not the concept or idea, um, you absolutely have permission to walk away from that because there's nothing of value there. 
um, and you know, if, for people who are angry and want to be frustrated and upset, and here's this asshole doing this, they're an asshole because they said and did a thing that was awful, not because they are necessarily like. When you can separate the person from the idea, you give that person the opportunity to grow. You give that oppor- that person the opportunity to change their mind and to be a better person in the future. If you label that person as a bad person, they're going to shut off and you lose those chances to 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 see them become better versions of themselves. So, how much respect do they deserve? They were they deserve as a, as humans lots of respect. But if they have terrible ideas, calling out those terrible ideas are exactly where you bring them in. And I think that one other thing, because I know we, we, we need to go quickly, but um, I've talked to a lot of people who haven't had these types of discussions who equate themselves with their ideas. They say, oh, you're upset about the way I think about this. You're upset about me, right? You think that I'm an asshole because the view that I hold is assholeish. That person needs to mature. Yeah. And I see it in atheists and I see it in Christians. Um, there are a lot of atheists who don't know the difference, and so that's why they attack the person and not the idea. And that is just the other side of the exact same coin. So yeah. hopefully that context helps. Don't be the don't don't be the guy that attacks ad hominem that that attacks the person. Um, and don't I don't think it's empathetic necessarily to respect bad ideas. Calling them out doesn't make you a bad person. So somewhere between yeah, those. Yeah, I, I think that's a great way of looking at it. Uh, definitely, because I'm very committed to like truth and truth above all else, and you know, getting to the, the why something actually is the way they are. But you know, sometimes people can hold ideas that are, you know, not so great. Maybe, uh, and just looking into understanding why they have those ideas is usually how I try to look into the situation. So, uh, yeah, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Drew, anything else? Uh, I don't think so. Your answer was fantastic as always. As was yours. I, 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 okay. Okay. Connor, have an awesome rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you so much.